Hi, and welcome to Dr. Vanderveen's AP Chemistry Podcast. Today we're talking about Lewis diagrams. Now this is a basic skill that comes along through all levels of chemistry. So our objectives are to review the process for drawing Lewis structures. We can do them for both molecules and polyatomic ions. Of course, we need to practice drawing the Lewis structure so that we can know the rules well, get all the little quirks worked out. And there are some exceptions to the normal um, Lewis structures that we drew, and these include expanded octets, um, electron deficient molecules, and molecules with odd numbers of electrons. So we'll talk about those later in the podcast. What you want to do when you start drawing a Lewis structure is make sure you've got your periodic table handy. The first thing you need to do is count the total number of valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons for an individual element can be found either from the group number or the group number minus 10, assuming you're working with a main block element, which normally we are. All right, and what we care about really is the total. It doesn't matter where these valence electrons came from, which element they came from. It's the total number that really is going to help us here. Then what we're going to do is set up a skeleton structure. We want to sort of arrange the atoms so that we can start to connect them together with covalent bonds. And tips for this include putting your least electronegative element in the middle of the molecule, making that your central atom. If you have carbon in your molecule, it will probably be the central atom. All right. Hydrogen will never be a central atom. It will always be on the outskirts or the outer edges of the molecule. Most of the time, but not always, the halogens will also be at the outskirts. Most of the time, the halogens only form a single bond, although you'll see later on there are exceptions to this. So those will probably be on the outside edge of your molecule. What you're going to then do is start placing those valence electrons into the molecule until every atom has a stable octet. And there's two ways you can do this. You can draw a bond, right, which is a shared pair of electrons. It can also be represented by a dash. So the, the two pairs and the dash are equivalent, but the dash is a little neater and a little quicker to draw. You can also just do a lone pair of electrons, all right, a non-bonding pair. All right. Either way, you want to put all your electrons in until every atom has a stable octet. That means every atom needs to have eight valence electrons when you have a collect correctly drawn Lewis structure. The hydrogen, of course, when it follows the octet rule, you would only have two electrons. So you need to keep that in mind. You're never going to put more than two electrons around a hydrogen, which means you're never going to have more than one bond for a single hydrogen atom. All right. I want to point out that you can really always count on carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine to obey the octet rule. We're not. Our first set of examples will all be Lewis structures that do obey the octet rule. But later on, as we move into more advanced structures, you'll see that there are exceptions. But you can always count on carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine to do what you want and obey that octet rule. The last thing I wanted to point out is you may have multiple bonds. You may more have more than one pair of shared electrons. So you may have a double bond or a triple bond between two atoms. And we would draw that with you know, two pairs or three lines. The other thing is you do want to show all those lone pair electrons. If you have non-bonding pairs of electrons attached to an atom in your Lewis structure, you are expected to show all of them. The other thing you want to do is when you're done drawing your Lewis structure is double check, count. Make sure all of your electrons are present. You don't want to lose points because you were supposed to draw 32 electrons and you accidentally only put in 31. Right. So what we want to do is draw some Lewis structures right now. So we have this molecule CH2, C Cl2. Well, we know that carbon contributes four valence electrons. We know that each hydrogen contributes one valence electron, but of course there are two hydrogens. And we know that each chlorine 
contributes seven valence, valence electrons, and of course we have two chlorine atoms in the molecule. So we have 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 14 is 20 electrons total in our structure. And that's an important place to start. Now the next thing we want to do is put together a skeleton. We've got a carbon atom, and so we're going to put that in the middle, and we're going to put the other atoms around it. All right, so we've got a basic skeleton here. We're not worried about geometries, really. We are just showing connectivities with Lewis structures. All right, so we have 20 electrons to place, and we want to put bonds in between everybody and make sure everyone satisfies the octet rule. So we can put two electrons here, two electrons here. Remember, a line represents two electrons. We'll start with single bonds everywhere between our molecules, between our atoms and our molecule. So that's two, four, six, eight electrons represented right now. Carbon has a, a full octet. The hydrogens are satisfied. But if you look at the chlorines, we're not done yet. So let's put in some more electrons. We want to have an octet around each atom. And the chlorines, we're not done. The other things, we knew, we knew we hadn't placed in all our electrons. So now, let's go and count electrons. I'll use red as we count them off. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So all 20 electrons are present. Carbon has an octet. Each chlorine has an octet. And this is a correct Lewis structure for this molecule. All right, let's look at the NO plus ion. All right. Now nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. And oxygen, we know, contributes six valence electrons. But this is a plus one ion, which means we've lost an electron. So it would normally be 11 valence electrons, but we've lost one. So that gives us 10 electrons to work with. All right, now we only have two atoms, so we'll place them side by side. We have 10 electrons. Let's see. Two, four, six, eight, 10. Well, if we do that, you'll notice that on the nitrogen, there are only four electrons around the nitrogen. We've placed our electrons in, but we don't have an octet around the nitrogen. So this is not an acceptable structure. Let's try again. There's a lot of trial and error involved with this. If single bonds don't work, try double bonds. So we'll put in a double bond between the nitrogen. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10. I, you know, we're just trying some things here. But if we look now, two, four, six, eight around the two, four, six, seven around the nitrogen, two, four, six, seven around the oxygen. All right, that's not going to cut it either. So let's try triple bonds. All right. And there's a lot of trial and error here involved with writing Lewis structures. So we have two, four, six electrons in the triple bond, eight, and if we look, we have two, two, four, six, eight electrons around nitrogen. So nitrogen's got an octet. The electrons in the bond are shared by both atoms, so they both count towards octets. So if we look for the oxygen, we have two, four, six, eight for the oxygen. And this is the accepted Lewis structure for nitrogen the nitrogen monoxide ion. But what, the other thing I wanted to point out is that normally when we write um, a Lewis structure for a polyatomic ion, we will write it in square brackets with the charge outside, the saying the charge belongs to the ion. And so this is really the best form we want to leave it in.